First of all, what are trans fats? So trans fats are basically, trans fats can be natural occurring, but basically trans fats are good fats turned bad. And what they're used for in the food industry is to make foods last longer. So as we're starting to seek things like convenience foods and processed foods, it allows things to have a longer shelf life, allows us to take them home and to be used for longer. So, but it's also in a lot of foods like cakes, biscuits, takeaway foods, it used to be in the old type of frying oil, but um, luckily a lot of people don't use that type of frying oil anymore. But basically it's in a lot of foods that tend to be un more unhealthy anyway for us. And how does the average consumer know what they're, if they want to avoid them, what they sh should they look out for at supermarkets and when they're buying things at, sh mm. at takeaways? It's really difficult because in Australia, we don't have mandatory labelling unless the food is making a claim. So if they're making a nutrition claim or a health claim, the likelihood is that they're, they are a healthier choice. So they're going to have less things like trans fats. But what we know is most foods that are high in trans fats are also high in other nutrients we're trying to reduce, added sugars, those types of things that make the food more of a sometimes food. In Australia, one of the things that Dietitians Australia have been calling on for a long time is support for a national nutrition policy. And this national nutrition policy will not only help with look at things like mandatory labelling and transparent labelling, but how we can improve health intake generally. Because at the moment, we know that in Australia, the population isn't eating as well as we could be, with nearly a third of our food coming from discretionary or less healthy choices. So why is Australia dragging the chain on this in terms of regulation? In this latest announcement from the World, from the World Health Organisation, it's mm. named Australia among just nine countries which have a high incidence of heart disease deaths that do not yeah. have a best practice policy. There's a couple of things that we need to understand here is that some of this is simply that we don't have the data in Australia. We haven't been monitoring it as well as, as we could be. We don't have huge amounts of trans fat intake. The last survey was around 0.5% of our intake is from trans fats, which is lower than the WHO recommendations. But we do know that the government needs to do more and to look at looking at doing more nutrition surveys and looking at implementing a national nutrition policy to help guide things like what we should be eating, what we should be preparing and what should be provided in our supermarket and how we can make that more transparent so people know what they're eating, how much they're eating and to make educated choices. It seems like a bit of a no-brainer in terms of helping people eat healthily. Well, why haven't governments acted on this? Unfortunately, I can't answer that for you. <laughs> As I said, Dietitians Australia, we, we would love to see a national nutrition policy some of when we have a look at the foods that are high in trans fats, we know that those foods are relatively easy to make at home and they're not an everyday food. But if you're making a cake at home and you're using starting from first principles, using healthier ingredients, making changes to so using healthier oils and you're using, um, you know, different types of foods, it is a healthier option than a processed food. But what we know in Australia is that we eat a lot more convenience food and discretionary food. But we're also reducing the level of us being able to prepare and cook food. Accredited practicing dietitians should be in every school so that we can help people learn how to cook from first principles. And to be honest, it sounds hard, but it's a lot easier when you know how to do it. You don't need to buy a processed mix. You can make that mix easily at home. They're the types of things that an accredited practicing dietitian can help people if we're in the population looking at that policy level from the national nutrition policy preventive health like dietitians in schools and being able to access dietitians through Medicare and also being out if you have heart disease or if one of your family have heart disease, we can help you by going through and saying, these are healthy choices, these are less healthy choices and help you work with you to make a meal plan that works well for you and your health and the health of your family. And what is the impact in Australia of not having best practice at the moment? I think I think from the, there's a number of issues, Joe. from our point of view, the National Nutrition Policy allows us to look at all of those issues as a holistic. We have poor nutrition in First Nations communities in regional and remote Australia, and even in urban Indigenous communities, we have um, lower levels of health from malnutrition. We have malnutrition, we don't need to talk about that issues within aged care. And then we have overnutrition, but in some people we have overnutrition also living with malnutrition. So they're eating enough energy, but certainly not eating enough high nutrient foods. So eating enough vitamins, minerals, dietary fiber, 
um, good fats to match what they um, need for their health. So I think having dietitians more involved from a policy level within food companies, you know, there's dietitians within food companies that help make help food companies make better choices with how they formulate their food. But if we look at a national nutrition policy, that allows us to take a holistic look and make a holistic plan so that we can improve the health of the nation. And it's something that we've been calling on the government to do for quite a while at this stage. And in the meantime, is it that that same old message of just uh, limit your meats and he eat heaps of fruit and veg? It's more around limiting your processed foods, actually. Right. So there are some naturally occurring trans fats in things like um, in your sat- with saturated fat, like in in meats and things like that as well. So moving to healthier cuts of meat and using things like fish and seafood, but also looking at using good oils, macadamia nut oil, extra virgin olive oil. Um, making food from scratch when you can because then you actually know what's in it and one of the things that cooking learning how to cook and you know doing some dietitian led cooking classes can be really helpful because even if you're cooking something unhealthy it's amazing how many people say i didn't realize that went into that so really you know understanding your food from first principles engaging dietitians if you're in a workplace in a school um, within an organisation or a council is really important to help the community to eat better. But we do need that holistic approach and that's why we're calling upon a national nutrition policy.